Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's my great honor uh, and pleasure to welcome you in Estonia. When I speak to uh, people outside Estonia, then I'm often asked, uh, what is behind our digital and e-governance uh, success? And I always explain, it's about mindset. Uh, we see e-governance uh, not just as a question of building uh, technology, E-governance is also a question of building democracy. People are living their lives online every day. They do everything online. And when the government is not online, then it just alienates from the people. Digitalization is never a goal in itself. It has been about the people and about delivering what is best for the citizen. Uh, to give you just one example, Many people know that 99% of uh, Estonia's public services are online and that for a long time only two services uh, that you couldn't do online were divorce and marriage. So I have news for you, uh, this is no longer the case. You can also, uh, since last year, um, also apply online to get married. Uh, what it means is much less hassle, uh, administrative hassle before Couples actually go and say, I do, of course, that is in real life. But, uh, but before all the administrative hassle, you can do online. Reinforcing democracy is about building trust. Uh, there is no trust without openness. Technology can play an important role in making governance more transparent and open. It is much harder to hide your tracks in the digital world. Our digital solutions and digital mindset have directly helped to make policy making in Estonia open, smart and inclusive. By following these principles, we have created an open business environment and attractive economy. There is very little corruption, our tax system is simple and transparent, and citizens feel more connected uh, to the state as they have the chance to par uh, participate in the policy making. It is not enough for the state to go online. Uh, once online, the state needs to feed constantly uh, and adapt the uh, services to the people. Um, this is what is behind the personalized state, uh, a vision that my new government has put in focus. We are long, uh, looking at long-term challenges and long-term changes and reforms we need to sustain to develop our welfare state. All of this uh, is in the context of climate change, the aging population and growing geopolitical uncertainty. The personalized state is our answer to this. Uh, this means taking the tools of the internet economy, such as data, personalization, design and automation, and based on reimagining uh, how the government provides public goods. We believe we can do substantially more for less. So it is also economically efficient. Uh, let me just give you a few examples. First, healthcare. Today, Estonians, uh, Estonians have fully digitized healthcare records and for a quarter of the population, a fully sequenced genome. We are using this to build personalized medicine for our whole country, from things as simple as a doctor focusing extra attention to get those with higher specific cancer risks into screening uh, to tailor-made medicines and targeting nudging. Second, real-time economy. Uh, today, we are working to bring the reporting um, burden for small enterprises in Estonia to zero. Payroll tax declarations, permitting, uh, statistical reporting, this can all be automated and done through application programming interfaces just, uh, or APIs. The next step is to make this work seamlessly across borders specifically here in the Nordic Baltic region, but really across Europe and the world, facilitating the trade for small businesses. And third, education. 
According, PISA test, uh, according to the PISA test, we have Europe's smartest pupils here in Estonia. But we also face the challenge of a rapidly aging teacher workforce uh, in schools and in thinly populated areas. The goal is to have personalized curricula and uh, flipped classrooms. We cannot make these changes uh, without leveraging AI as a foundational uh, technology. Using AI is nothing new for us. Since 2018, we have developed over 100 successful use cases in government as part of a long-term vision to put AI to work for our people. Of course, I was also considering to replacing some of the ministers with AI, but um, that is set for the future. Quite literally, our uh, goal is to give each Estonian uh, their personal AI agent, a bot with the singular task of increasing their owner's well-being across public services. We call it bureaucrat, based on Estonian mythological figure, uh, krat. The other precondition for creating a personalized state is digital identity for citizens. Estonia's state-guaranteed digital identity helps to um, you know, establish digital services and also trust. Now, the ident identification of users is taking on a new meaning as deep fake technology becomes more widespread. You all know this cartoon where two dogs are behind computer and one says to the other that I didn't know that you can do these things as a dog. And the other one says that, well, the power of internet is that nobody knows you're a dog. But Digital identities solve that problem and can solve so many problems that we have online that we don't actually know that whom we are interacting with. We could just solve uh, so many problems. What we have to take into account nowadays um, is Russia's continuing its large-scale genocidal and imperialistic war against Ukraine and wants to rewrite the world uh, in its own image, where might makes right. Much of our focus has been on the conventional war that is going on, and rightly so. Uh, the aggressor must be defeated on the battlefield. But in addition to the conventional war that we see going on, Russia is also waging a hybrid war and doing it globally. This includes energy war, information war, cyber war. We must all draw lessons from this both for our support to Ukraine and to take the leap forward in our own defense. It is also a reminder that we actively need to enforce a world where technolo technology works for, not against democratic societies and human rights. Ukraine has shown, uh, showed us that having a trustworthy digital society is a strength, not a weakness. Ukraine's digital backbone has been invaluable to keep the state running and deliver services online, even when the war is going on. Many Russian cyber attacks have not been successful, not because of luck, but because Ukraine has spent years building up cyber resilience with the help of Estonia and also others. And now Ukraine has lessons to teach us all. Some government data systems in Ukraine were physically relocated. Similarly, uh, like we had in Estonia, uh, pioneering the data embassy uh, concept. The Ukrainian state app called DIA uh, was offering citizens a one-stop shop for public services already before the full-scale war. And now it allows Ukraine to keep providing services for millions of refugees spread across Europe and trapped or trapped under Russian occupation. It has even replaced physical identity documents. Estonia is working with Ukrainian partners to adopt the app also for our own citizens. We call it the MRIG, the mobile state. And I'm very glad that Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Mikhailo Fyodorov will also be sharing Ukraine's experiences with you today. We must all be prepared that cyber war will continue even after the conventional war ends. The security environment has changed and we must adopt accordingly. A strategy of deterrence against cyber attacks 
or disinformation has not been sufficient. Our focus must be increasingly on resilience, giving our institutions and people the skills to cope in the high-risk environment. As digitalized societies, we need to make sure that public uh, services remain available and data is kept safe, also during aggression and crisis. When a few years ago, hospitals only had to worry about some drug addict and coming and, and stealing the morphine from the hospitals, then now their security risks are much wider and the security risks are cyber. Uh, with the cyber attack, there could be also civilian casualties when a hospital is attacked. We also, need, uh, we also have a need for swift information exchange. We need high-level trust between like-minded countries, service providers and intel agencies to share the kind of information that can help to prevent attacks. I always say that the bad guys share information, so the good guys should share information as well. It is also high time to reduce our dependencies. Technology is no exception. A few years ago, uh, Estonia introduced the concept of trusted economy. Today, this is more relevant than ever. We must build connections and set standards with those we can trust, especially in the new technologies like AI, 5G, quantum computing, uh, everything that is becoming reality uh, right now. And to conclude, uh, policymakers, businesses, civil society increasingly understand that the digital sphere is not the sideshow, but actually uh, the front line. For the well-being, prosperity and also the security for the societies. This is why I'm also glad to invite you back to Tallinn. Uh, and uh, continue these discussions uh, this September when we are hosting two back-to-back -back, uh, summits. First, the annual Tallinn Digital Summit on the 5th of September and followed by the Open Government Partnership Global Summit uh, on the 6th and 7th of September. Both will put technology and strengthening democracy at the heart of those conversations. So I really look forward to welcoming you all back. But before that, enjoy the conference. Thank you. Thank you.